I think business uh, must now take the lead in identifying and scaling up the solutions that will transform the economies into a low carbon economy. Um, we, all businesses in the world by now, know that climate is changing. The science is indisputable. The risks inside companies and in the global supply chains have significantly increased already. And the technology uh, that is going to make us uh, go to a low carbon economy has been identified. What we haven't done properly yet is understand how do we scale up the implementation of these technologies. And I think that's where business has a key role to play. So I think the, the business community is by now almost unanimous in its ask from Paris. The first is give us a clear long-term target. Uh, the words are less important than the clarity and the ambition level, whether it's carbon neutrality in the second half of the century, net zero in the second, second half of the century, but a target that puts a dot on the horizon and, and shows that the political will to move to a low carbon economy is now firm. The second thing we need is um, a, we call it a five-year review process. So the countries have put in their commitments to so-called INDCs. Companies are putting in commitment targets. Let's all review the progress against these targets every five years. And as we become more successful in the transition, let's start to increase the ambition level in these targets. So a five-year review process. And the third thing uh, is carbon pricing. Uh, if we want to make the transition to the low carbon economy go well, go fast, then we need to put in a price on carbon. It's less about the method, whether it's a tax or a trading or a market system, uh, but the economic incentive that will clarify that we're going to go to low carbon is what, the, what business is calling for. So three things, ambitious long-term goal, five-year review mechanism for the country and the uh, business uh, targets and a clear price on target on uh, carbon. Now, I think if we do that, um, in combination with uh, something that government has to agree in the, as part of the agreement, the, the international financing mechanism, then then we will see that where the governments will will put in billions, the private sector through its actions, through the finance sector jumping in will leverage that up to possibly trillions. We will see that every company will begin to then think, wow, what does this mean for me being net zero in the second half of the century? Um, Long-term investments all of a sudden come into scope for discussion around the climate change, not just the day-to-day -day stuff on energy efficiency. And that will completely change the conversation. It will change the way that uh, shareholders, insurance companies, pension funds, We'll think about the risk in companies. That will put, change the way that shareholders ask questions of management. That will mean that boards will need to get involved and need to ask management what they're doing. And that will, that will completely mobilize a next wave of involvement from business. Yeah, it, it, it's too early to, to say what, what precisely is going on inside the negotiation room. I, I think the big win that we have this year in, in the COP, it actually started last year in Lima is that business and cities, the so-called non-state actors, are now much more involved into the conf conference itself. So many business leaders, many mayors of cities have been invited inside the COP21 venue. There's lots of, of uh, momentum there, lots of presentations and dialogues. But of course, the negotiations are up to governments and governments only, and that's the way it should be, by the way. So we all hear rumors on what is and isn't happening. Um, I don't know what is true of those or not. Uh, the only thing I will say, there are the three things that are truly important if you want to go fast on low carbon economy, set a clear long-term target, set a, a, agree a good review mechanism every few years, and an economic incentive to make this transition go fast. We mean business, the coalition of business associations that has formed in the run-up to Paris has put out a thing called the business brief, a very small card with the, the main asks from business to the policymakers. I know that, that that brief has been distributed widely, so that should encourage all the negotiators. The, the message really is there are now thousands of companies asking for these asks. They are all unified in what they think they need 
to really accelerate and scale up the transition to low carbon. And hopefully the negotiators uh, will take that into their uh, considerations. I always say that 2015 will, will, in 10 years from now, show to be a historic year. Uh, the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, were agreed. We're now all in Paris, and we're all hoping that there will come an ambitious global climate agreement out of uh, the proceedings here. The reason why 2015 is such an important year is that, first, in climate, four years ago in Durban, it was agreed that this was the year that the world was going to agree the climate agreement. So we have had a build-up to this meeting in terms of the, the UNFCCC process. In the meantime, science has become indisputable. You know, there's now 97, 98 percent of the scientists are all saying the same. Climate deniers are almost extinct at this point in time. Um, the risks are becoming real. E even in Copenhagen a few years ago, the main scientific conversations were that in the scientific simulation models, bad things could happen if we continued on this trend. Well, bad things are happening today. Uh, the weather is changing. Droughts are happening. Go to Chennai, floods uh, for the last two weeks. It's basically brought the economy there to a halt. There's, there's examples everywhere. The, the fourth thing you see is that business begins to understand that the transition to a low-carbon economy is now inevitable. Now, the science is so clear. The risks are building up. The political will seems to be in place to get a deal done. So this is an inevitable transition. If you look through that lens to that transition, then all you see are opportunities. Because we need new technologies, new infrastructures, new business models. Everything needs to change. And, and that is what business is best at. You know, look at the risk, identify the opportunity in the transition that is needed, and go after it. The reason why this is becoming such a meaningful meeting is, I think, something that Minister Pilgar in Peru started last year with the Lima Action Agenda that has now become the Lima to Paris Action Agenda. Um, that was the first time that non-state actors, again, business and cities, were invited into the COP process, not in the negotiations, but in the COP process itself. And that has, has really changed the conversation. It has allowed cities and businesses to bring their solutions, to have real dialogues about what do we need from governments or from banks or from anybody else to get these solutions to scale. And it is the beginning of a process where we can hold each other accountable on are you actually doing what you promised? Because to me, that's the key thing. I'm, I'm not the best person to attend COPs. There are too many talks, too many people having opinions. But it is a platform where people make promises. Let's come back next year, three years, five years from now, and let's then say, hey, you promised this then. Can we see the progress? And can we see it in a language that it's comparable with the rest of the progress? And where do you need help to go faster? And if we can get that rhythm in the upcoming COPs, then Paris will prove to be the historic start of that and really bring us the, the momentum and the movement towards this low-carbon uh, society. Well, I think this week here in Paris, we've seen a whole host of announcements uh, coming to uh, from business. Uh, they range from individual companies, uh, companies like uh, Unilever saying they're going to be carbon positive in 2030, uh, carbon neutrality, agriculture announcements, individual companies making lots of statements. I've seen announcements coming out of the financial sector, uh, the Portfolio Decarbonization Coalition, now $230 billion of assets are being decarbonized. You know, fighting climate change is not against economic growth. It will actually be the driver for economic growth. And the last thing that report said that is equally interesting and probably will have uh, impacts on future processes like the COP is once you start thinking about solutions for climate, climate smart agriculture, forests, uh, any energy solutions, it is never just about climate. In the framework of SDGs, these nine solutions touch 11 of the 17 SDGs. And that is an important message to the UN and to all the leaders in the world. We cannot no longer think just climate, just water, just hunger. If you start thinking solutions, we need to start thinking on an integrated basis. 
working on climate is good for livelihood for farmers, will deal with water issues, will have an impact on ecosystems. And what we need to begin to do is more on an integrated basis think what is the optimal solution. And I think LCTPI, the work that these 150 companies have done and have now committed to implement going forward, will, will continue to be a great example of that. I think COP21 in Paris will prove to be a historic event. There are more businesses and more investors willing to scale up their contributions and solutions. What we need from this agreement is a clear long-term goal. We need a review mechanism to make sure we're on track every five years to be tested. And we need an economic incentive, call it a carbon price. If those three things are put in place, then more businesses, more financial institutions will join and we will actually be able to successfully move to a low-carbon economy.